If you're looking for a way to manage your settings.py file and your environment variables in your Django project so you can run your app in both development and production, then this video is for you. I'm gonna show you how to use Django Environ so everything will be very easy to manage when it comes to environment variables. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to start a Django project to demonstrate this. So Django admin start project project. And then we'll take a look at settings.py. So the main problem is certain things need to be environment variables. So like the secret key, debug, allowed hosts, and so on. So Django Environ makes that really easy to do. So let me start by installing the library, Django-Environ. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a .env file in my base directory. So this is on the same level as manage.py. And inside of here, I'm going to set debug equals on. And I'm also going to set secret key to be equal to the same secret key that I have in the file. So this is not the secret key that you would wanna use in a real project, but I'm just taking it because it's convenient here. So I'll just put the secret key here in the .env. So I wanna get these values on in secret key into settings.py. And to do that with Django Environ, I have to start by importing it. So let me delete this stuff here at the top. And I wanna import Environ. And I also wanna import OS because I'll need it for one thing. And then under this base directory here, this variable or a constant, uh, what you wanna do is you want to create a variable called env. And this variable, which is an object, will be used to get the environment variables in different ways. And to set it up, I need to call environ.env. So this env is capital env. And then you can pass in some settings here. And the main setting that I wanna pass is debug equals and then I need to tell it what data type debug should be. So it should be a Boolean. And I wanna tell it what value it should be by default, which should be false. So if I ever mess up debug, like if I forget to include it in my environment variables, like on my server, for example, it will just default to false if it doesn't find it instead of defaulting to true or not found or anything like that. So that's enough for the env object. Then after this line, what I can do is I can read in the environment variables that I have if they're available. So in development, you can have a .env file. And by the way, you don't wanna commit this .env file to your repo or anything like that. Um, you wanna put it in your git ignore if you have that. Uh, this should be only for your development environment and then your production environment should be different. Like your environment variables should be stored in the actual environment. But here in dev, I need to be able to read it. So I'm gonna call environ dot env so the same thing here to start but instead of initializing something i'm going to call read underscore env then i'm going to pass in the location of it so it's os.path.join and it's going to be the base directory joined with dot env so now once the django app starts it will read in the env file it will take in debug and secret key and then if i want to use those somewhere in the settings.py for line 19, for example, for a debug, what I can do is instead of having true, I can do env and then the name of the environment variable. So debug, which matches the key here. And by the way, notice that I have on here. There are a few different values that mean true in Django Environ. So on is one of them. You have true, both uppercase and lowercase. Uh, you have okay, you have yes, you have y, and then you have the number one. So any of those values will translate to be true when it comes to debug. If you put any other value, it's going to be false. So just keep that in mind. So on or okay or yes or true, whatever works for you in the environment file should be fine. So now let me try starting my Django app. So Python manage.py run server. And we see it turns on just fine. So now let me try putting debug off. So let's just say off. Like I said, anything that is not what I mentioned before will be false. So if I run it now, we see you must set settings allow host if debug is false. So now it's reading that debug is false because I changed it to something that wasn't in that list of things that I mentioned before. It's no longer on, it's off. So we see allowed hosts, and if I go here, allowed host is an empty string. So typically when you have debug mode off, you need to supply a list of allowed hosts. That's just the default way that Django works. So what I can do is in here, I can go and create allowed hosts, and then I can supply a list of allowed hosts. So typically in development, you'd have two, so local hosts, 
and 127001. So these will be comma separated and there's no space after the comma or before the comma, just comma separated like this. So localhost 127001 and then anything else you may need. But in my case, I only need these two things. So now let's go to settings and let's update allowed host to take from that. So it's a little bit different. I just can't call ENV and then allowed host. Django and Viron needs to convert the comma separated string into a list. So to do that, I can do env.list and then pass in the name of the key, so allowed hosts. And then I can also pass in a default just in case I have nothing there, which should be an empty list. So now let me try to run the server and we see it starts up again because I have the allowed hosts defined. Next, let's think about databases. That's another important thing that you will need to set up in your settings.py. So right now my database is set as a SQLite database and we see the default database is base directory slash DB SQLite three. So to get this to work, let me go to ENV. And what I'll do is I'll create something called database URL. So this name is actually important because it's the default name. And normally it's convention to use database URL for the location of your database. And then you can pass on the location of your database. So it's a SQLite database followed by three slashes and then DB SQLite three. And this just represents a file in the exact location that it is. Then I can go back to settings.py and I want to update this to use Django Environ instead of the values here. So I'm gonna delete everything here and I'm gonna replace it with just env.db or db URL, both work. And then what I'll do is I'll just print databases here so we can see it. So let me start the app again. And then we see here we have defaults. So default is this default and then db URL returns the name, which is db.sqlite3, and it also returns the engine. So Django db.db.backends.sqlite3. If I were to change the database URL to Postgres, watch what happens. So first, notice the engine, so db backends sqlite3. So let me change this to a fake Postgres URL. So Postgres colon slash slash, and then let's say Postgres Postgres at localhost, and then the port would be uh, 5432, and then the name of the table will be Postgres. Actually, let's do this, user, pass, and then database name, just to make it even more clear. So Postgres database, username is user, password is pass, the host is localhost, the port is 5432, and then the name of the database is database name. So let me run this again, and we get an error uh, that I don't have the Postgres driver, but that's not important because I'm not trying to connect to a real database. But if we go up here to where the prints are, here we go, um, we have the new output of the database dictionary. So the name is database name, user, user, password is pass, host, local host, port 5432, and then the engine is django.db.backends.postgresql. So it's taking this string and converting it to this format for me automatically. So let me change that back to SQLite because I don't have the Postgres driver and I can remove this print here. So that covers the database URL and basically everything else is pretty much the same for what we've seen. So you have things for the cache where you can use a cache URL instead of DB URL and it works in a similar way. Um, you can use lists in other places and then for things like debug where it's just one value, you can use debug. So let me show you the documentation and if we go here, We'll just see the supported types, so dictionaries and then these URLs. And then if we look at the quick start, we'll just see some quick examples. But I basically cover like the main things that you'll need to do. So in this case, they're using debug and secret key. And thinking back, I forgot to update my secret key. So it will just be env and then secret key like this and it will work. And then the comma separated string thing. So it's really that simple to use and it's gonna make your projects a lot easier to manage when it comes to your configuration values in both development and production. So that covers how to handle settings.py in your Django projects. If you're interested in learning how to deploy your Django app to different services that can host your production app, I have plenty of those videos on my channel and you can check them out.